Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here and welcome to Fishing Hacks. I got a lot of stuff going on right now and you know, normally I put together an elaborate episode and I have a lot of those in the works, but I wanna show you guys some tricks I've been doing over the years. Some of these tricks have been in other episodes, but I wanna kinda of catalog it all into one area of key word being fishing hacks. So I wanna show you a variety of things I've done over the years to make fishing a heck of a lot easier. Uh, cool knot to save you line, tricks to save you fishing line, tricks to save you lures, tricks to get more fish to bite. So right off the bat, I wanna start off with rubber bands. And you may have seen me put an ifs quick video together showing hooking the hooks together on a crankbait like so to where you can stack them all in the box. It takes less space to uh, stack them all up in the box and they don't snag one another. You get it out, you tie it on, you pull the hook, that little rubber band will break just fine. But there is a lot of uses for the little rubber band. Now, I got the crazy glue right here. We all know if you put crazy glue uh, before the keeper on a hook, you know, you can put your plastic up there and it'll dry and it'll hook to it. Uh, but you know, but that's a process a lot of guys don't want to do. So a cool little trick that you can do, um, you can either, what I'll do is I'll, sh I'll take it off and I'll show you. And what I'm gonna do is I'll take one of these little rubber bands and I'm gonna tie it over on itself here. So basically I'm just gonna open it up and don't mind my shaky hands. I'm gonna just twist it over three times around the tip of the worm, okay? So two, three, and then I'm gonna run it up. I'm gonna roll it up to the head of the worm. So what it's doing is it's compressing the plastic down really tight. So now if I take a jig head with a little keeper on it like so, and thread this worm, if I get that rubber band part up past the keeper, it's gonna hold it on there much tighter uh, then almost like putting crazy glue on there. It's gonna hold it much tighter. And the benefit of having those little rubber bands for you, you can find these things at any dollar store around the whole country. Everywhere I've been traveling across the country, I've seen these little rubber bands at dollar stores and I give them to my fishing buddies and I show them, the, show them these tricks. You get that little squeezed compressed part up past the keeper and it's gonna keep it on there really well. The advantage there is some plastics react to crazy glue. They'll dry, they'll melt. With those little rubber bands, you can either get the black ones or the little clear silicon ones. Um, sometimes there's plastics that'll react to these and they won't react to the black rubber ones um, and vice versa. So it's kind of good to have a package of those little black rubber ones and a plastic of the little clear silicon ones. Now you may be thinking, is this really that important? If you're on a bunch of fish, absolutely it saves you a ton of money and it'll catch you a ton more fish. Now I'm gonna slide that off and show you another variation of how that works. Let's take a drop shot, for example. And you may be thinking, oh, I'm gonna stick the hook through it. All I'm gonna do for my drop shot is put it right behind that rubber band. Now, why would I put it behind that rubber band? It's simple, that rubber band is squeezing and compressing the plastic. The more firm something is, the harder it is for something to cut through it or tear through it. So if you look at here, I'm pulling fairly hard on this morning dawn worm right here. Oh, that's not the morning dawn. I'm pulling fairly hard on this worm right here and it is not tearing off. I can pull that rubber band off, do that exact same thing. It'll tear through that worm, no problem. So this is going to catch you a lot more fish drop shotting it. You squeeze that little rubber band around the head and you took the hook in directly behind the rubber band to where it's pushing against, it's trying to tear against that compressed rubber right there, compressed plastic. So it's gonna save you a ton of worms by doing that. It's huge, you get a short strike on the tail, you go to set the hook, you get a little anxious, that fish could have tore the worm off, swam away, lost the opportunity. This way you pull it away, your worm drops back down, he gumps back, gets a second chance, you catch that fish. Um, now along with that, I've, I taught this probably oh, 10 plus years ago, where you do it on a wacky rig worm, okay? You run it right in the middle of the wacky rig worm. You twist it over on itself two or three times. And what you're gonna see, I'm just rolling it down with my fingers. And what you're gonna see is the plastic crosses itself 
at some point. When you make that little twist and you loop it back over, it's going to create a little V in there. And when you're, you're going to want to get it in the center of your worm. So let me slide that rubber band down a little bit farther for you. And all I'm going to do is take that little wacky rig hook and I'm going to bring it in behind the V and out in front of the V. So what I did with that little wacky rig hook right there is I brought it in behind. I stuck it in here. So you see that little X where they're crossing? I stuck it in here, brought the hook under the center of the X and brought it out the other side. What that's gonna make that worm is way more durable and it's not gonna tear off very easy at all. So you see those rubber bands can save you on drop shots. They can keep your crankbaits untangled. The same thing with flipping creature baits where you're flipping through heavy cover, you can do the same thing on the head of those creature baits to make them more firm to where they don't slide back down the keeper on your hook. Um, if you don't want to take the time to crazy glue them or if the bait doesn't work with the crazy glue, use that rubber band. All right, so there's some other tricks with those rubber bands, but I'm going to save that for part two. Now, a lot of guys get in my boat and they'll see my box and they'll see a brown Sharpie, a red, a black, and a chartreuse scent marker. This is huge, and let me tell you why. In dirty water, very dirty water, black always works. I don't care if you have a white worm, a bright color worm, you can darken it up. So now, no matter what, you can adjust your plastic to that dirty water. Red accents on bait help a lot. It gives that gill plate look. So red's a little emphasis color that you can add to some baits a lot of the time to get them to focus a little bit more on a striking point. Brown is one of the more natural colors in all ecosystems. Juvenile crawfat, uh, crawfish, snails, other little crustaceans, certain zooplanktons have brown accents to them. So you have a lot of options right there. Then we have chartreuse. Now, juvenile bait fish tend to have chartreuse highlights in them, and bass have an affliction for chartreuse, especially spotted bass. But what lots of anglers have noticed for over the years with chartreuse is more of a focal point or a movement accent. And let me explain what a movement accent is. So let's say I'm throwing out this wacky rig, okay, and it's going boop, boop, boop through the water. Well, the movement is coming on the tips of the worm, both sides here. So by highlighting the end, and I'll do that. Ooh, how's that garlic scent? <coughs> oh, man, and I need to some pasta tonight. So by putting chartreuse on the end of there, now when it's falling, if the water's a little bit stained and it's undulating down like that, it's really emphasizing the movement of that worm. Now let's say I'm getting a lot of strikes, but they're just not loading up on it. Now I know, okay, maybe they're focusing on that. Maybe, maybe I should make them focus on the hook. I can come right in next to my hook, bend my hook out of the side, and add chartreuse accents right around the hook. Sometimes this is what you need to do when you're getting short strikes on your plastic. Add chartreuse accents right next to where the hook's being placed and you would be shocked, especially with spotted bass, your hookup ratio will greatly increase. Now let's say I'm fishing that bright color. You know, I, I don't think I'm getting bit on white. If I want, I can brown this out really quick. Let me just show you with a Sharpie how fast it is to put brown on there. You can make your plastic so natural looking and so darn fast with Sharpies it's absolutely ridiculous. Take a look. Take a look at that color right there, how natural brown that is with a Sharpie. Once it absorbs into that plastic, if you're fishing gin clean water, you can adjust your plastics accordingly just by carrying these colors, and then you can get them to focus in with chartreuse accents. So that is a major fishing hack. If you don't have these, you need them, because otherwise you'll get out there, you'll notice like, maybe I should have made that color change, but you didn't have the plastics but you could have made it work for you. All right, I'm gonna show you a braided line hack knot. I got really anxious one day to just tie on a lure that I was trying to film in the water, so I slapped together this generic knot that was really, really fast, and I ended up hooking a monster bass in the process of having this generic knot, and I noticed I caught that fish, my tag end didn't slip, and it was super easy. And I'm gonna show you now. 
I have very, very shaky hands, so bear with me here. I go through that eye, and I'm going to do one overhand knot. What knot have you ever seen with that? Then I'm going to put my finger right on top of that eye, and I'm going to do a clinch knot. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put my fingers through that loop. I'm going to have my tag into the length that I want it. I'm going to wet it, and I'm going to fasten it down. All it is is a clinch knot with an overhand knot in front of it, and that thing does not slip. It will not slip. It will not break. It is absolutely tough as nails, and you never need to trim your tag in ever again. It's an overhand knot with a clinch knot, and then you put that tag in however much you want left out. This thing only fastens down harder on itself. That will not slip through. That one overhand knot prevents that braid from slipping. I've caught probably 50 plus, eight plus pounders on this knot right here, and I've never had an issue. Um, I even went away from the Palomar and improved clinches and double Palomars for this knot here, and it's been extremely successful. So you may have noticed my braided line's getting a little bit faded. It's getting a little bit white. And you'll see a lot of guys take a black Sharpie and mark the first couple feet of their line. Well, why is that? White reflects ultraviolet. Anything white is going to reflect, uh, refract light. So what guys will do is Sharpie out the first one foot or two foot of their line. The simple way is to take a razor blade, cut right across the tip, slide your line into that Sharpie, and slide it up and down. Well, I'm gonna show you another cool thing that I like to do when punching or fishing a frog. Sometimes I'll skip it back under trees, and you won't see that two or three foot of dark line. What you can do is if you go four feet up your line and you do a foot of chartreuse, you would be amazed. You'll see that chartreuse sitting out in front of that shade pocket and you'll see that chartreuse line jump real quick, just like a fly line. And it gives you that visual indicator where you may have not noticed it that one day. This is why a lot of the time you'll see guys fishing with yellow braid for their frogs and then they blacken out the first few feet. It's the same trick. If you have any sort of green braid, you can do that and it'll work perfect. Hang with us guys. We'll be right back. Oh, you heard they got weapons of big fish destruction? Well, you heard right. Biwa Fishing Performance is the newest company hit the U.S. market by storm. With some of the sickest swim baits around and non-cookie cutter style lures that you could ever get your hands on, it's time to show these fish something new. Visit Biwa.com. Hey guys, did you know that Jurors Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly pan fish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country in Escalon with one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from North River, Hughescraft, and now Crestliner? Chances are they have the right boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your repair or boating maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. Bigger, better, batter. The evolution of the buzz bait is upon us. The evolution baits grass burners, a high performance bass snatcher machine. High end components, inline displacement, larger profile, balanced body for fast or slower retrieves, better deflection, and oversized treble hooks. You wouldn't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, would you? Find out more at evolutionbaits.com. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong, abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch, super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. So what I often hear from guys, line is so expensive, fluorocarbon is so expensive. I spool up one time, you know, and then six months later, I have to change it or I get a bad backlash and I have to change it. I'm gonna tell you a little secret, guys. On my spool right here, 50% of the way down, it's 50 pound break. 
Why is that? Do I ever get down that far into my spool? Hardly ever. You can go about 30, 40% of the way and that'll work, it'll do the same trick too. And then you tie a uni to uni knot and you run fluorocarbon top shot. That just means the outside of your spool, the line you're fishing with is your top shot. You run a couple hundred feet of fluorocarbon on top, you'll fish all day, you'll never even know there was braid in the center. Few months go by, you wanna replace it, pull your fluorocarbon off, take the 50% of the spool you have left, or you, know, you might be able to spool up three times with one spool of fluorocarbon and spool on that new line with another uni to uni knot. And you will save yourself tons of money when it comes to your fishing line. I wanna show you another little trick. I'm sure you guys have seen tons and tons of pros do this. I'll actually do it with, with my braid rod over here and make you guys see it real easy. When you see me hook a bait back on the rod, get in there little bird, you'll see me grab the line right here and I'll hold it and I'll rotate the rod in my hand just to develop tension and I'm going to put it over the guides of the rod and it's going to suck that line down against that rod blank so I can lay it on the deck and it won't get tangled up with my other rods. Very easily organized, pop your bait off, twist the rod the other way and you'll get everything loose and you'll be good to go without tangle. So how many times have you been out on the river, out on the lake? and you've tore up your plastics and you're like, oh, it's a perfect slice. Like, I wish I could reuse that and you end up throwing it away. Here's the thing, get yourself a gallon plastic bag and from now on, when you get a good tear in your worm, if half of your plastic's missing, you're gonna have to disregard it. If you get a big tear in your worm like this and it still looks like the worm's in good shape or a tear in your creature bait and it looks like it's in good shape, throw it in that gallon plastic bag. Once that bag's halfway full, go home, and do this trick. Steal one of your wife's favorite butter knives out of the drawer, or your own if you're a bachelor, but take hers, they're better. I'm just kidding. Get yourself a paper towel, a plate, and a lighter. Here's how to fix these puppies. What you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna heat the tip of that butter knife up a lot. And all we're gonna do, once we get this thing really, really hot is we're gonna stick it right into the tear of the plastic until it starts to melt. Then we're gonna pull the knife out and it's gonna fuse that plastic back together. And just like that, my cut is all fixed up. My plastic is good to go. Just insert it in the slit, melt it, put your plastic back together, let it dry. You are good for another use. I have flipped and pitched with 500 to 1,000 plus plastics I fixed over the years when I couldn't afford to buy new plastics every time they were torn up. So if you guys wanna save yourself some time, save yourself some money, you know that's the way to do it. When you're sitting back watching a fishing show, heat them up and fix them. All right, let's cut this creature bait all the way through this Biwa War Axe. You can see that is a big cut. I'm strictly gonna heat that knife back up. You wanna make sure the knife's hot for the, the big amount of surface area. If you have a huge slit, you wanna heat up a bigger portion of your knife to make sure it melts all parts. Make sure you don't burn yourself with uh, shaky hands like me. There you go, just like that. Rock and roll. Fuse right back together, good to go. Who would have ever thought you could have saved yourself so much money over the years, right? All right guys, for the last part of this part one of Fishing Hacks, I'm gonna show you how to pop a snagged bait loose or how to come over potential snags more successful or get it out of a tree and not get it all tangled up in there. So I want you to look first off, I'm gonna use the corner of my lawn chair here. I want you to imagine, if I'm pulling up on the rod, if this is a branch, this is a tree branch, if I'm pulling up on the rod, I'm asking the lure to impact whatever this object is. Now, if you imagine the line going straight, I'm still going to impact it. But imagine your line angle downward. If I'm pulled down fast, what does it do? It creates momentum outward. If I pull down with my rod and fast, it creates outward momentum 
to flip that bait over. So let me back up and show you exactly how this works. All right, so I casted that bait back in there and I found myself over a branch. This is wrong, this is wrong. Making sure I see my bait dangling on slack line and popping it down is going to clear it over the top of that. All right, so we made that cast, it went in, it wrapped all away around that branch. So now it's completely looped over. This is a gnarly rose bush right here. So when you look at it, I see guys try to jerk really hard with their line in this position. If you strictly put your rod tip down and pull hard, what happens is it'll get your bait up against that. And most of the time it'll turn the hooks out. Sometimes it turns the hooks in. But if you're down with consistent pressure, a lot of the time you can strictly pull it loose. If you pop, if you pop your bait, you're gonna swing it with that loose line and it's gonna wrap around again. It's gonna get even tighter. Downward heavy tension is going to progressively work it loose. Sometimes it'll pull off there and those hooks will get on there and pop it free at that point. All right guys, now let's say you made a cast. You got your lure snagged out far away from you. It's not subsurface. You can't use a lure retriever. You're having a tough time getting to it by boat. There's a little rod slingshot trick you can do a lot of the time to knock it loose. You shook it, you couldn't get it back. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little additional slack in. You're gonna grab your line here and you're gonna grab your rod, your line just behind that first guide there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it and you're gonna try to slingshot your rod all the way over to it. You can pull it back and you can slingshot your rod up to your lure to try to knock it loose like that. Just like that, yes, it can cause damage to your guides, but if you are that critical about getting your lure back and you have that much faith in your rod tip, you can easily knock a lot of lures that you thought you would never be able to get back out quite easily doing that little rod slingshot trick. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman. Hopefully you like Fishing Hacks Part 1. Uh, maybe I'll throw some more of these together. I know I have a ton, a ton of tricks that I'm just not thinking of today, but uh, make sure to like and subscribe, guys. We'll see you next time.